بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on our study of the كلمة تفسير كلمة توحيد Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd ahabita fillah continue on in our study of tafsir kalimata tawheed by Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali hafidhullah ta'ala He was talking about the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called the Quraysh, various tribes from amongst the Quraysh and they gathered and he affirmed that he was the truthful one as they knew but then when he said and he mentioned began to mention about the punishment of the hereafter they rejected and denied him and in response to that uh, Abu Lahab became angry and said may you perish for the rest of the day you only called us to tell us this the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed to the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam then perish the two hands of Abu Lahab and perish he so therefore we see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called them to the single to single out Allah alone in worship and to abandon worshiping the idols Allat wal Uzza and Manat and the rest of the things they worshipped. And Abu Lahab was the head of those who were opposing and denying the Prophet وسلم, and he harmed the Prophet in, so, uh, in such a way and all of his harm and his hate and detesting of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, came from his, the Prophet وسلم, said here in Satawheed and called to Tawheed, Da'wa ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if he, the Prophet وسلم, was to call them the Quraysh and ask them, who is your Lord and who created you? They would have replied, Allah. And the first of them to say this would have been Abu Lahab. Who created the sky and who created the earth? They would reply, Allah. They would never reject this. But when they were told, La ilaha illallah, that Allah is the only one who truly deserves to be worshipped, they became arrogant and denied it. As for the people of philosophy and rhetoric, they came up with a new invalid meaning for la ilaha illallah. They are the most misguided people in regards to knowing the meaning of la ilaha illallah. And thus, until this moment, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that all the sects except the people of the menhaj of the Salaf in their methodology and in their teaching, like the schools of the Sufis and the schools of the Rafidah, they are all upon this corrupt meaning of the statement of la ilaha illallah. And that is why you will find that they worship graves and believe in charms and believe that the awliya have knowledge of the unseen and that they work and have control in the universe. Meaning that they believe that their scholars and, their, and that their, the saints have knowledge of the unseen and that they actually uh, control the universe. This is how the Rafidah believe about Khomeini and, and people like this. And this is because among the ranks of the sects like the Rafidah and the Sufis, there are those who are atheists and heretics who just want to destroy Islam. So this atheist and this heretic dresses up in the dress of the Muslims and acts as if he is devoted, as, as if he is a devoted worshiper and aesthetic, but in reality he is an atheist. Thus they spread the ideologies of shirk and hulul that Allah exists within people. So some people they even believe that Allah, they'll say Allah, God is within us. And there are people who say la ilaha illallah and even have this claim, wa'iyadhan billah. And wahta tawajud, that everything in existence is Allah. So some believe that Allah is one with all of creation. And this is some extreme Sufi sects like Ibn Arabi and those who follow his madhab, if you will. 
And all of these ideologies are widespread amongst the Sufis to the extent that I don't think that at this moment there's a group of Sufis on the earth who don't fall into shirk and halul and wahda to wujud as a whole group. But there are some individuals who might be free from falling into this deviation, but the majority of the people of these sects all fall under, fall into this misguidance. And they also fall into believing that the awliya have knowledge of the unseen and that they work and have control in the universe and slaughtering and calling to other than Allah and asking help to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah for guidance and well-being, I mean. So it is upon us to know the meaning of La ilaha illallah with a clear and distinctive insight. And also it is upon us to know the meaning of what it necessitates of the different types of ibadah. And the definition of ibadah as said by Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, uh, ibn Taymiyyah uh, ibadah is the plural form of all things which Allah loves and is pleased with from the actions and statements whether were done openly or secretly. This comprises of the ibadah of the heart and the tongue and the ibadah of the body and limbs. Those which are from the heart, meaning the acts of ibadah that are from the heart, things like fearing Allah, having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, longing, dreading, depending on Allah and love, all of the things like these from the actions of the heart, or those are actions of the heart. So these are the ibadah of the heart which are necessary for everyone and it is not permissible to direct any of them to anyone else other than Allah alone. And from the ibadah of the tongue came firstly the pronouncing of the two shahadas. And then there's the other actions of the tongue from which there are those who are ob which are obligatory and others which are recommended. For example, it is a must to recite Suratul Fatiha in every rakah of every prayer. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La Salat Liman Lem Yakra Fatih al Kitab. There is no prayer for the one who does not recite the opening chapter of the book. So this is from the obligatory actions which every Muslim has to pronounce and proclaim. And then there are those which are recommended, like the recitation of the Qur'an and doing dhikr, like tasbih, tamheed, ta uh, tahmeed, tahleel, after the prayers and before sleeping and during traveling like this. So those are the recommended forms of ibadah, but they're still ibadah. Thus we see that the ibadah are divided into those which are obligatory and those which are re recommended, mustahab. And it is upon the Muslim to know these so that he can use them to come closer to Allah, the Most High. And from the ibadah of the body and limbs is the standing for prayers and bowing and prostrating and the actions done during hajj, like tawaf and other acts of worship done by the limbs. Thus, if you pray to Allah with the actions of your limbs, but together with the presence of the heart and the statements of the tongue and the bowing, prostration, tawaf, standing at arafah and other actions of worship. Therefore, all ibadah of the actions of the heart, the statements of the tongue and the actions of the limbs, all of them have to be done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Ikhlas, complete sincerity to Allah alone, is a must in everything which brings us closer to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to grant us and you guidance and to grant us success and understanding in the religion and the different categories of knowledge of the religion. And specifically, we ask Him for understanding in the matters of Aqidah. This is because the understanding in Aqidah is referred to as Fiqh al-Akbar, the greater understanding. And understanding in the matters of rulings is termed Fiqh al-Askar, the lesser understanding. And this Fiqh al-Askar in every aspect is detailed from the Fiqh al-Akbar, which is the Aqidah. We ask Allah to grant us knowledge and understanding in the religion and may peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Thus ends our reading and our brief ta'liqat of tafsir, tafsir tawheed, of the statement of tawheed by Sheikh Muhammad bin ha uh, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al Medkhali, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of our ulama. Bless them with ikhlas with the bad. Bless them to make islah bayna ahl sunnah Bless them with guidance and forgive them of their shortcomings and their forgiveness and, and their, 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 their shortcomings and mistakes. 
And may Allah bless us all with علم النافي رزقن طيب وعمل متقبل. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala forgive us of our many many wicked sins. And may Allah put this on our scale of good deeds, not on our scale of bad deeds. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم.